All right, Cal Hurd, have the Celtics taken control of this series? Should they be the favorites? Yeah, I, I watched Bill Belichick last night. Every time the Patriots are in a game, Jacksonville, Seattle Super Bowl, Atlanta, we, we never feel they have the best players. And it always ends the same way. We're like, how did they win? Jacksonville had all the great players. And I'm watching that game last night. At one point, they are pounding Philly with Shane Larkin, 20-year-old Jason Tatum, Aaron Baines, Terry Rozier, who wouldn't start unless Kyrie Irving was hurt, and Marcus Smart with a bad hand. Shooting hand at that. Okay. And they're pounding Philly on a day rest. Like, this is what Belichick does in football. The two best coaches in American pro sports now are in Boston. One's the football coach, and one's the hoops coach. I th I'm not ready to jump ship on Philadelphia. I I'm going to write this off to a young team feeling itself, reading its press clippings, not realizing that the first round of the playoffs is different than the second round. The second round is different from the conference finals, and the finals are different from the NBA finals. And so I just don't think the level of intensity, I think it caught Philly off guard. Boston was more ready. I'm going to wait one more game. Boston at home, playing well. They lost all their road games in the previous series against Milwaukee. I I'm going to wait one more game before I jump ship on Philly. Well, a couple of things. I think the Sixers are still favored. I think they're still in that prime position. But what you have, and this is to further your point about Boston. I'm a huge Sealer fan. We play New England. I cringe every time. This year, for first down, end of the game, we got the ball. We go nine yards, but it's a penalty. Now we're first and, t first and 20 instead of second and one. We beat ourselves. New England does it. That's what Boston did. Boston out-executed this Philly team who wasn't ready for the multiple movements and screen and the activity. Because when you, Stephen, you know this. When you're not as talented, what happens? You have to out-execute your mm -hmm. opponent. And you got to think about it. Brad Stevens has been doing this since he's been at Butler. Right. When he got the back-to-back Final Fours, he wasn't the most talented team. But they out-executed teams. They didn't turn the basketball over. They shot the ball well from the free throw line. All those components, as you saw last night, is what happened in that game. But I still think the Sixers are favored. But this Boston team could be tough to beat. I still, I still have this uh, series as, as even, even as, as it would be if it was 0-0. Mm -hmm. um, Philly still have the, their better talent, the, the stars, the two stars, Embiid and Simmons. But Embiid said it. They didn't execute. They didn't follow their game plan. And it showed, it showed last game. Boston came out. They stuck to their game plan. They outplayed them, played harder, and wanted the game more, and it showed. Uh, I think next game they'll make some adjustments, but like B said, next game they'll follow their game plan and they'll be ready. It'll, if, be, a different, it'll be a different outcome. If I had better ingredients, you were the better chef, who'd make the better meal? You. Yeah, I have more experience at cooking. Than <laughs> <that>. <laughs> I go out to dinner. Yeah, but, but that, I mean, that margin of error is slimmer, too, with Boston. The chef makes the better meal. There's also, I mean, I like Philadelphia. I said a couple weeks ago, I can't wait to watch them play. I, I go to the TV set more for the Sixers than LeBron. There's four things about the Sixers, though. Do we need to pump the brakes a little? Number one, Embiid got hurt again last night. Markel Fultz is available and a DNP. <laughs> What's their track record? They got hot against bad teams in the East late and beat Miami. Ben Simmons, last four minutes, can he shoot a free throw? Like, I like them a lot. They're still a young team. They, they got, and they got some issues, and I think all of those are legitimate. I, I agree, but I want to ask you two former players that have, you certainly, you won an NBA championship. I do, th there are levels to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. There's a different level of intensity that I don't think Philadelphia was ready for, especially with all the adulation and celebration of what they did in the first round and everybody anointing them, oh, they're going to go to the Eastern Conference Finals. I just don't think they handled the success well. Adulation, I'll ask you about that later. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, but yes, yes, you're exactly right. Making those same threes in regular uh, season is a totally different shot in that second round. You yeah. can't, you know, everybody can't make shots in the playoffs and make them in the regular season. It's tougher. So you're right. It's, it, it's another level of basketball. Each possession is tighter. And every team and every player is not built for those moments. So we'll see, like Rogier, he's showing us. I'm built for this moment. Kyrie's not around. I can, I can step up and play big. So everybody's not built for this moment. We'll see in these games. But keep in mind, the Sixers had a chance. They broke the league down a couple of times to mm -hmm. about six points, but they couldn't did. get over the hump. Defensively, they got to make adjustments. Let's go back to your Golden State team, mm -hmm. back when you played Dallas. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody figured that Dallas was a more talented team, but you had the better matchup. Right. They couldn't match up with you. You're going to see a little bit of this in this Boston series mm -hmm. where from a matchup perspective, Brad Stevens is going to put Philadelphia players in situations where they're going to have to think once, twice, 
three, four times, multiple times when they're guarding the ball. Mm -hmm. So now that's going to open up opportunity. And you make, you're making J.J. Redick, Thank uh, Bellinelli, you. you're making point. those guys guard. That's they right. They went at yeah, Redick exactly. every, oh, chance every chance they, they could. could. Yes. Mistake that the Pacers didn't make against Cleveland and exactly. Kyle Korver we exactly. talked about. That's right. Kyle Hurst, you think Greg Popovich can repair this relationship? Those are real quotes. I've said before, Kawhi is different. He's different. He's nonverbal. He hires an uncle to do his business. Trust is big. In high school coaches and college coaches never gave him love. This is a young man who's not verbal, who doesn't trust a lot of people, walks into a fishbowl in San Antonio, and the coach calls him out. Good luck repairing that. This is, this is the first star that Pop can't control. He's not from Argentina. He's not from France. He's not from St. Croix. He's from San Diego, right here in California. He thinks different. This is the first superstar, and I will say this on TV, that Pop has had that has braids. This is a different type of superstar you have now, Pop. So, Pop, so he wants to do things his way. But Pop can fix this relationship. Give him the Supermax. Money always fixes things, especially when he wants what, he, what he's worth. I think if they, don't, if they don't improve that team and give him what he wants, I think he'll walk. Yeah, I've been told from Kawhi's side that, look, they, they're saying Pop is so confident in his ability to repair relationships like he did with LaMarcus Aldridge mm -hmm. that he thinks he's just going to put his arm around Kawhi and say, hey, that was just to, you know, get these guys fired up or get you on the court, give them confidence, whatever. It don't work with real and, ones. It, it, and that's what they, I was told. Look, I was even told if the Supermax is offered, it's not a certainty mm -hmm. or a guarantee they would take it. I'm with you. I think they would. But that's what I was told. So he's got a long way to go to repair Pop, this. But he, Pop, Pop is old. Right. If I'm the Spurs, do, does it ever cross my mind, hey, maybe it's a good time to transition to a different coach if we have this young player that we think has another eight years left? Does Pop have eight more years left? W would the Spurs ever consider, maybe it's, maybe it's the Pop's wife just passed, maybe it's a time for him to think about retiring. Well, I, 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 me personally, I thought he was going to step down once Tim left. That relationship was so tight. I thought once Tim, reti with Tim retired, then Pop was going to step down. But it may be time for that. But how can you tell a great coach like that that it's time for him to step down? Yeah. But Kawhi, I know Kawhi, I, and I, I talk to him a lot of times. He loves San Antonio. He loves being a winner. And if he can go somewhere else and still be a winner and still be a great player, that, that's a great option. See, there's this perception, and you know Kawhi, you play with him. There's this perception that he's not that smart because he doesn't talk a lot. Right. But tell us, I, I think he is very smart, and that's what I'm told, too. It's no other player in this game that wants to be the, one of the greatest when they retire. Kawhi wants to be one of the best players to ever play this game. He's focused on that. And he understands that he don't have to say it. He gonna walk it like he talk it. He gonna go out there and just prove it in his game. He doesn't have to, he's not one of those guys that's gonna go out there and talk. He's a great teammate, he's not a negative guy. So when they came in the, in the, in the, in the media and was kind of going at him from the teammate side, from Tony Parker and Ginobili, that's unusual from the Spurs. And it caught him off guard because this never happens in this organization. So all of a sudden, the team's not good and things are not going y'all way. Now y'all gonna come at me? It's not right, you can't do that with your star. That's to me why, okay, let's say you don't move away from Pop, but maybe his old school guys, Tony Parker and Manu, maybe they need to go so it can just be clearly Kawhi's team and not Pop and his good old boys. He's holding him back. Yeah, Manu, again, it's great. You know, he can average eight points at 40 years old or whatever. Man. But maybe it's time to move on uh, from him and Tony listen, Parker. Listen, this story from the very beginning has been fascinating to me. A star player basically disappears from his team. And every time I read it, between your sources, between Ramona Shelburne, between, you know, who at Woj, the sources are all saying the same thing. Uh, Kawhi's side's not happy. And it can't all be the same source. This stuff's getting out, and it's getting out because people want it out. I think Kawhi's camp is deeply hurt and has lost trust. Well, and I, I'm told that they, they're like, whenever we see the Spurs... It's all good. Mm -hmm. Like, in our faces, Kawhi's there's... Yeah, yeah, they're saying, I mean, they've got trainers up in New York with Kawhi. Mm -hmm. They knew we were getting a second opinion. They, they said it was okay. They, they knew we were going to be in New York during the playoffs. They said it was okay. We see Pop, you know, there's texting here and there. And then we see these anonymous sources coming out, ripping Kawhi, and they're like, 
It's not coming from us. Right. Well, it must be coming from you. So there's some two-facedness there. And, yeah. and then you got Tony, Ginobili, Tim. They all went through injury. Have they, any one of their injuries ever been questions? Question? This is the first, this is a defensive player of the year, finals MVP. He's not playing things and not going your way, San Antonio, all of a sudden. Now you're questioning your start. It never happens in the organization. And that's why Kawhi's upset. So, so you think he wants to be all things, like he wants to stay in San Antonio, though? If they I, could fix it. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think he wants to be in San Antonio. I don't think it's that big of a problem where he wants to leave, but at the same time, some things have to be shaken up. You know, th this quote in the story that this was a seamless transition, it, I, don't, I don't know if it's been a seamless transition from the Duncan era to this new era, because, again, Manu and Tony Parker are still representatives of an older era. Yes. And now, again, he had a problem with LaMarcus Aldridge that he had to solve last offseason. Another new guy, not a part of the old era. And now Kawhi, they need to move on from Manu and, and Parker.